We are now ready for another exciting presentation from Robert Teseo and Andre Alvarez, Vehicle Dynamics Engineers at the Multimatic Technical Center. Their presentation will focus on the development of a jounce damper for off-road applications using VI Car Real-Time, which enabled Multimatic to significantly reduce development costs and time. Please come on stage, Andre and Robert. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to VI Grade for hosting us at this conference. Um, we're very pleased to be here with you guys today. So my name is Robert Teseo. Uh, Join with me today is my colleague Andre Alvarez, and we are from Multimatic. We're going to be talking to you about some development work we did for a Jounce damper. This is a bit of a different product to something you've seen in the past couple of days, and it's a pretty different application. Um, so we'll walk you through kind of the process that we used and explain how um, the use of car real time was uh, essential in this process. To start off with, we're going to do a bit of a background about Multimatic. So uh, Multimatic, we are a global company supplying automotive parts to the automotive industry. Um, we've been around since 1984. And one of the key things with Multimatic is that we're very technology and engineering driven. So always looking for uh, more effective ways to do things, always looking to uh, push the limits of technology. Uh, we have five main operating groups, mechanism, structure and suspension, niche vehicles, special vehicle operations. And then the group that we're going to be talking about today is Multimatic Engineering. That's the group that we're a part of. Uh, we have a very wide uh, array of things that we do. So it could be anything from you know, structural simulations of a chassis, uh, all the way to component simulations, CAE, all the way to component modeling. And uh, as many of you know, we have the DIM 250 at our sim center in Novi. Uh, so we're able to do component design as well as full vehicle design, objective evaluations, and subjective evaluations. Uh, what's more than that is we operate anywhere from low volume to high volume. So for low volume, it could be anything like um, dampers or the chassis of a race car or supercar, all the way to the control arms or you know, hinges on, a, uh, on an SUV or a pickup truck. So the key thing we want to talk about today is not so much the product, but really the process that we use to develop this. So we use what's called our Multimatic Integrated Systems Analysis Process, which we shorten to MISA. And you'll see that it has uh, two different sides to it. There's, in the bottom left corner, we'll have the virtual side. And then in the top right corner, we're going to have the uh, more physical side with the actual components. Both of them can be done as loops. And they need to start off with a design brief for the vehicle. From there, we can do virtual development and actual physical development. It starts off with synthesizing the component, refining that design or that representation, and then this is where car real time comes into play. There are simulation tools will allow us to do objective performance evaluations as well as subjective performance evaluations through the use of the DIM 250. Through that, we will then go on to design the actual components, and from there we can actually refine our designs, do more virtual loops, cutting out a lot of the actual uh, development time and parts required to, to do this until we can finally finalize the design and then create components, do that objective performance evaluation on a system level. So what you see there is a multi-post test and finally going to the human integrated performance verification. So try it on an actual car. So it's important to note, this is just an example of a product we've done in the past. So for you know, position sensitive damping, um, what we're gonna talk about today is a different component on a different vehicle. So we start off the process with our design brief. So the design brief for this vehicle is that we want to have something that is able to withstand all of the aggressive environment of off-roading. So it's able to ma maintain uh, control and withstand all of the loads that come with that. But we also don't want to compromise on-road handling and on-road comfort. Now, what we think is that we want to swap out the elastomeric jounce bumper with something hydraulic. 
like a John Stamper. And you can see the main difference there is instead of being force versus displacement, we now have force versus displacement and force versus velocity. But we will get into some more details of a John Stamper. Why do we even need a John Stamper for this? What does a John Stamper do? And understand that we first need to look at what an elastomeric Johns bumper does. Let's talk about the, the curve that defines this. So we have a damper, a spring, and a bump stop. And as the wheel accelerates, it will impact the bump stop at a very high velocity. Eventually the bump stop force will increase with that displacement until the wheel will stop traveling. You can see that at the top of the curve there, it stores a bunch of uh, spring potential energy and all or most of that potential energy is then forcing the wheel back into rebound. Now let's compare that to a hydraulic jounce damper. We still have more or less the same thing. We have a damper and a spring, but we swapped out the bump stop for the jounce damper. We get the exact same situation. It will impact the jounce damper at a high velocity. But this time, we're able to resist both velocity and displacement. So a lot more energy is, is dissipated and that eventually stops the wheel from traveling. So two things to note here. We have a lower peak wheel force and we also have less wheel travel. Finally, the wheel is still forced back into rebound. This time, uh, the jump stamper continues to dissipate energy through the use of rebound damping and uh, that causes it to rebound with less velocity. So overall, the benefits of a John Stamper, you get a lot more energy dissipation, um, you get less you know, frame and tire loads, and uh, more efficient use of the wheel travel, and then finally, you're, uh, you have damping in both directions, which helps a lot with your rebound stop loads. Now let's talk about vehicle level objectives. Now that we know uh, qualitatively what we want, let's assign quantitative values to that. So remember that we want, to, uh, we want to maintain control and withstand the loads that come with aggressive off-road driving. This is just an example of, of what we'd be looking at for aggressive off-road driving. We're airborne quite a bit of the time, and uh, whenever we do have loads, they're very sharp and very sudden. So let's, we're starting off at the top of our uh, MISA virtual development loop. We can say that we have three different goals. We want to minimize body motion, things like heave acceleration, uh, pitch velocity, pitch amplitude. We want to reduce the wheel travel, a more effective use of the wheel travel. And then we want to reduce the peak tire and frame loads. To summarize all this, we want to increase the amount of energy we're dissipating. And we want to do it more evenly throughout the travel of the wheel. So now let's talk a little bit about the model. In order to do this, uh, there are three things that are critical. The first is that you need a correlated vehicle model. And the way that we start this off is using Adam's car. Uh, so we'll build up the model using the hard points and then correlate it to kinematics and compliance data. From there, we need to correlate, or sorry, from there we need to convert it to a VI car real time model and then correlate it to the vertical dynamics. We'll use our multi-post rig. Um, that's an example of our multi-post rig, obviously with a different vehicle, that's a sports car there. The next thing you need is a road model. So the road that we're using to represent this aggressive off-road driving is something we call the WHOOPS profile. And finally, we need an actual model of the component we're, we're modeling. So the way we do it is using VI car real time running co-simulation with uh, MATLAB Simulink. So there's a Simulink model that represents all of the motion and forces within this jounce damper. That makes it easily, it easily interfaces with VI car real time and it's easily changeable, tunable, and lots of things you can change. Finally, now that we have an idea of how we're going to model this, um, we don't really know much about what this component needs to be. There's a lot of uncertainty at the early stage of the project. We know generally we need a jounce stamper, but we don't know really much about it. So there are lots of open questions, things like, how's it going to be mounted to the frame? What spring rates do we need? How much damping do we need? Do we need preload? What type of damping, like digressive, linear, progressive damping? Uh, all of these things are, are not really certain right now. But what we can do is we can just assign very simple, uh, simple representations of this jam stamper early on in the program. 
the use of simulation really helps because instead of manufacturing and prototyping like many different designs, many different design concepts, uh, we can do it all virtually. And by doing that, you can effectively go through the loops of virtual uh, development, moving from the design brief, synthesizing uh, the component, and then uh, you know, assessing the objective performance of that, and then seeing how it meets your design brief. And then finally, we can go to the actual component optimization. And my colleague Andre is going to talk more about um, that optimization. Uh, OK, yes, as Rob said, we went through all the process, um, virtual process of refining the, the design of the part. Uh, so now we have a, a better uh, direction of this design. Um, we, we know that we, we want a, a two chambers, both, uh, both with a mix of nitrogen and damper oil connected by a damper orifice. Um, we know we need to, to keep our vehicle level uh, targets uh, and minimizing cost and also meeting the component uh, requirements as uh, packaging, structural, and thermal uh, efficient. Um, with, that in mind, uh, with that in mind, we, we have a few parameters we can, we can change on that model. Uh, one is the nitrogen uh, pressure uh, that we use to set our preload. Uh, the damper uh, oil uh, volume that we use to set uh, how progressive this spring curve will be. And we also need to, to define if we're going to use a progressive, digressive, or linear damping curve. Um, so with that in mind, we, we update our um, Simulink model uh, to a more refined one. Um, and we consider in this model now um, all the, all the details you already have, like uh, connect, connection to the chassis, uh, the contact point to the suspension. We model the, the nitrogen mixture as a nonlinear spring. The damper orifice as uh, changeable to, uh, to, so you can try progressive, linear, or digressive damping curves. Uh, we model the rebound contact uh, as a spring, we add the jounce damper um, mass, and we also model the, the, the contact pad as a spring and a damper. Okay. So now we are going to go through the uh, object perform, uh, performance assessment. Um, we, we know that we, we want our model to, uh, to have some, um, we know that we, we want some, we know that we want, uh, some, uh, sense, we know that we want some reduction in body motion, um, wheel travel and vertical motion. So uh, we can check this uh, vehicle performance uh, by changing uh, the charge pressure, the oil fuel volume, and, and the damper architecture, yeah, changing between progressive, linear, and digressive. Um, here we are looking at a uh, bump event of our off-road um, profile and comparing this, uh, the change on this, uh, the sensitivity of these parameters. We can also look at the full uh, off-road profile, uh, comparing the same, uh, the same change uh, to looking at the, the full vehicle performance. Yeah. So charge pressure, um, oil fuel volume, and damper characteristics. OK, 
Okay, so now that we have, uh, uh, so now we can compare the our model to a actual uh, elastomeric damper, uh, just bump. Here we're going to look at the bump event and see how it performed against uh, a elastomeric stop bump stop. So we can see we we. We can see reduction in body motion, uh, the wheel force, the wheel travel, the tire force, and we also can see a increase uh, in more linear energy distribution, more even energy distribution. Okay, so to 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 sum up, uh, we have shown. Uh, the our process to go from a vehicle level um, target to uh, a component um, design, and we we got to this point using a co-simulation with a um, Simulink model and a VI car VI car real time full vehicle model, um, and. Currently, these parts are, have been manufactured in our own vehicles to subject evaluations. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>